It is difficult to get across to my own people that you did things thousands of years ago better than they are being done right now. You keep going back to systems of people, systems that wasn't designed for you. Okay, now, Vano, yeah. your beginnings with Gear Unlimited. Yeah. Take us back to before it was again Gear Unlimited. Before it was Gear Unlimited. Shit, before it was before it was no Gear Unlimited. It wasn't nothing but the streets. You know what I'm saying? Um, selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? Getting money. Huh. Living that lifestyle. You know? And um, shit. Got tired of getting locked up, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Catching cases, you know. And um, when I got when I came home, you know, that 2002, came home and uh, then I shit couldn't get no job, you know what I'm saying? The man had that bag in, but uh, I was on parole. I was tired of going, you know, going back, man. So. I was going, you know what I'm saying, come up with something different. And it was an old cat that I had uh, ran into that uh, put me up on um, on New York, you know what I'm saying? Getting close, you know what I'm saying? And, and flipping them. I'm like, man, this shit, you know, seemed kind of slow. You know, my man Warren Buffett said he got three, business, three rules when it comes to business. Rule number one, don't lose no money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. And rule number three, do a business you understand. That mean if you're the kind of cat to get his shoes shined, like to get his gaiters shined up and all of that every week, you might want to think about the shoe shine business. If you're the kind of guy that, that he'll get his uh, rims done every week and get his car detailed three times a week, you might want to think about the car wash business. If you're the kind of guy that likes to go shopping and like to go out to Vegas and to Cali and down to Miami to get fresh outfits, you might want to think about that apparel business. And that's basically the, the, the same you know, blueprint that I use for the selling of clothes was just like selling them, you know what I'm saying? You know, do something you understand. And the thing is, Ronald, you're going to hear a whole lot of player haters, people talking about, oh, it's too many barbershops, it's too many clothing stores, there's too many car washes. But that's people who don't understand business. It's always room for one more, Ronald. It's always room for one more. You know, Five Guy Hamburger still getting money despite a Burger King and McDonald's being around forever. You know, there's always going to be room for one more. We as a people got to understand how big the market is. I just told you earlier in the show, we spent a trillion dollars a year, a thousand billion. So when you dividing up that kind of money in the black community, there's plenty of room for new businesses. If you don't like your situation, just change it. Like, do something else. And then that's when I decided to go forward with pursuing my own thing. At that time, I had no idea what my own thing would be. So I started analyzing it. What are you good at? Nothing. Great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next. Uh, what are you interested in? Traveling and shoes. Ugh. How does that make me money? I don't know. Next. So literally, it went through like that channel or that that changeling of emotions for me to arrive at. You know. Well, what is it that you're interested in that everyone else isn't interested in? Long story short, I wanted to bring it to the family. I wanted to do a show that made that my grandmother can watch and not be offended. So and this is when we created Who Wants to Be a Star. And we hired this company, these black people, and we hired them to screen the talent for us. But it wasn't really about what, how much talent you had, it was that you, were, you had the, the guts to, to do whatever you needed to do. So we didn't care about what you did, it's just that 
you come to the stage and you give your best. When I was younger, I was a military brat. I grew up in Europe. I always wanted a boutique. So when I opened a boutique, I just did the theme of Paris because I lived there. Okay. As an entrepreneur, what were some of the hurdles that you encountered starting your business? Oh, funds, funds, funds. This wall doesn't work, this inspection does not work, this carpet is too short, but really no big deal, but it's a lot of hurdles. So I told my mom, like, Mom, you know, I quit Barclays today and I'm moving back in. She's like, what? She flipped out, like, you know, parents are so like, they really don't understand our generation. They don't understand how someone would want to leave a steady paycheck to the unknown and the uncertain. So my mom completely flipped out. She didn't like it at all. I shipped all of this stuff to her house and I just started making lipstick in her kitchen. When I moved to Detroit for that three month period, I made lipstick every single day. Every single day from the moment I woke up to about three in the morning, get back up at eight o'clock, do it all again. And it, it just became this phenomenon. Like all of my family would come over like, what are you doing? Like people can't make lipstick. Like people would physically say that to me like, Melissa, you know people don't make lipstick for a reason, right? And it was just like, I'm doing it right now. Do you want to try this color? Mm -hmm. I actually just made this really nice color that will look awesome on you. There aren't many young black women or just black women for that matter of all ages in the beauty industry. So I don't find that there's a power struggle. I more so find that people embrace me. I went and grabbed, you know, the stuff that I knew that I could make some money off of. Mm -hmm. you know, when I went to New York and my man was putting me up on you just, just before the throwback really came around. I just it just touched down the Mitchell and S throwback jerseys, you know what I'm saying? And I had a guy that I was doing doing business with and he was like, Hey man, look man, I got these throwback jerseys, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, I don't know. He, he was like, look, man, I give you a good ticket on them. They got like seven, eight, nine hundred dollar price tags on them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I think I can maybe work with that. That's some money now. We talking some money now. Now I can go and spend five hundred, turn around and make me fifteen hundred. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Real quick on a lookout tip. So um, my old my old cat was looking at me crazy. You know, we shopping and shit. You know what I'm saying? He going around to all these places. He got all these bags. He loves getting all these bags and shit. Right? I shoot to my man right quick, and uh, I got one little bag. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm ready to go. He's like, damn, you ain't got but one bag. I'm like, that's all right. This little one little bag, you know what I'm saying, is going to add up to two times more than them 20 bags of that bullshit you got. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, mm -hmm. we uh, we shot back down there. We went back, you know what I'm saying? We came back to the crib and shit, and uh, I was calling him that night. Like, dude, I'm ready to go back. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know what I had got, you know what I'm saying? So, we, you know, he's like, well, I ain't ready yet. I said, well, look, man, you know, hurry up and you need me to help you flip some of that shit. I'll help you flip some of that shit so we can hurry and get back because I need to get back because I got orders, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had made me some cards up and shit. You know, I was out to Trump and I had a lot of guys, you know, that they wanted them throwback jerseys. So, that's what I, that was how I really, really came up on was off them, them throwbacks. That was the lick. Right mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. That was the lick. That was the lick. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give other younger and unexperienced entrepreneurs just starting out? Save your money and don't talk about it, do it. <laughs>